Welcome, adventurers, to Drogen, or rather Draugen, as it is most probably pronounced, since the game was developed by the Norwegian studio Red Thread Games. According to their game description, we are dealing with a fjord noir story of mystery and suspense set in Norway. We are playing in the year 1923 as Edward Charles Harden, an American traveler who came to Norway in search of his sister. Accompanied by Lizzie, a lively and enigmatic young woman, the two explore a forgotten coastal community nestled amongst the dark fjords and towering mountains of rural Norway, and unearth the terrible secrets that lie beneath the picturesque surface. What begins as a quest for a missing woman becomes a journey into a painful past. Day 1 That must be Lizzie. The water's cold. It's a fjord. You're not going swimming. Boo. You're such a wet blanket, teddy bear. You know I don't like it when you call Edward. me... Edward Charles Harden, Esquire. Will you promise to behave on land? Do I always? Lissy, promise. Well, so. Piffle and foam is below us, Teddy. You ought to know better than to ask. Yes, I'll behave. I'll be a proper young lady. I shan't run or climb things or laugh too loud or call anyone old dude. Aside from you. That's not nice. So, do you think we'll find your Betty in... Uh, what did you call this village? Gravewood? Oh, we have choices. Betty Edward knows in a hurry that this is there. Okay. okay. Grove. <clears throat> yes, I do. Why here? What's so special about Gravewood? She never said. Grave but knowing my sister, something drew her here. But how can you know? I just do. In her letter, she wrote about... But that's months ago. She could have gone anywhere. Without writing or telegraphing her editor in New York, she wouldn't do that. Betty's... Oh, the cat's pajamas, the bee's knees, little Miss Perfect. Alice, you're talking about my sister. Fine, I'm sorry. Elizabeth Sadarb, we all love her dearly. And Teddy Bear, Edward, we will find her. Betty's fine. Why, we'll see her as soon as we get to shore. She'll shower you with kisses and berate you for coming all this way from Hanover, Massachusetts to the middle of positively nowhere Scandinavia way. Just to chase Norway. her down. What? Everything so. will be Jake, old fruit. <laughs> she doesn't like Betty? Is that it? Is that Groove Woke? It looks so peaceful. And beautiful. And so desolate. It does. Like a place built for ghosts. Finally. I don't think I could do this for much longer. Listen to Lizzie or rowing? Can you row any faster? I'm getting frightfully <laughs> bored. I'm not so sure. How about you take over, Alice? <laughs> you slay me, Teddy, old bean. Was that thunder? Still distant. The boat will be in safe harbor by the time the weather arrives. So you say. But I say put your back into it. Because we're sitting ducks out here. Quack, quack. <laughs> it's so quiet. Where is everyone? Probably working. I know it's a foreign concept to you, but that's something <laughs> normal people do. Hardy har har. The Fretland farm is up the hill somewhere. Up where? Oh! I believe it's that farmhouse, all the way at the top. Hot dog! Let's ankle! Hold on. Let me read the letter from Mrs. Fretland first. I'll meet you up there, old sport. I want to explore. <laughs> Last one's a skunk's tail. Oh, uh, you can go. You can Be go. Be careful. The ground's muddy. I need you some peace. And fall. <laughs> See you in two shakes. <laughs> Oh. Mr. Harden, we would like to extend an invitation to visit our home. If 
trouble to hear of your sister's disappearance. No news to share. We'll find our farm on top of the hill. I hope I got that right. Look forward to seeing you here in October. I'll August 4th, 1923. Well, I'm here. Where are you? Did you make it to Grovik, Betty? And why did you pick this forlorn hole under the mountains? Also, sprach Zarathustra. Oh, can I please read that? We don't, don't have feet. We don't exist. I know. Step to it, teddy bear. Alice? I'm up at the oh, that's cool. So we can locate sound. Wow. That looks beautiful. But can we read the letter again? I'm not sure if I have an inventory. It does not seem so. There's something. Frederick Fretteland and Son. Landhandlerie. <laughs> What's that? Oh. Huh. Where are you? What is that? Rest? Are you coming? Just taking a break. Hurry up. Storm's getting closer. So we are either actually old or the suitcase is pretty heavy. Draugen. Music is nice. And the landscape too. I like that. We start huffing and puffing. Let's rest. Silver cheese. I think we need the next break. This must be a church big right there on the hill. And that is one beautiful house. Seriously? You're not the one. 
carrying a suitcase. <laughs> What's in there? <laughs> Look at that. A little hunting lodge or something. And a huge barn, maybe? And yes, we are in Norway. What took you so long? I'm not 17. Nor are you 70. Put some spring into your step, old sport. You take the suitcase. It's at half mast. Someone died. Oh yes, it is. So this is it, huh? Nice digs. But seriously, where is everyone? Huh? Fishing inside mountains. Yeah, this most is probably inside. Indoors. The rain's picking up. You first, old bean. We can knock. Hello? Anyone there? Mr. Fretland? Mrs. Fretland? This is Edward Charles Harden, the American. We've exchanged letters. Maybe they went on holiday and left the door open. Give it a shake and a rattle. I can't just barge into their home. It's not a crime if you're invited. But they don't know that we are here yet. I'm coming in. This is... Uh, this is Mr. Harden. Well, it's open. Hello? Is anyone home? This house is as empty as a bird's nest in December. Hey, you want to check out the upstairs? Uh... Why? No? Certainly not. <laughs> I'm going to sit down and wait for the Fretlands. Maybe there are extra comfortable chairs upstairs. <laughs> Maybe. Well, Maybe not. I didn't want to go upstairs anyway. It's creepy. There must be a sitting room on this floor. This is the kitchen. Hello? Anyone there? Hello? Hello? Oh, so you get to peek upstairs? Unfair? Told you. Empty is an empty nest. Hmm. Well, that's not a bench, that's a chest. <laughs> what do we do? Do we exit? Or there's one door left. Let's try that one. Oh, this is nice. Charmingly rustic. The Boston Beaumont would pay a pretty penny for this setup. I thought foreigners lived differently. This is almost like an American home. People are people wherever you go. Thanks, Proust. But it's it's pretty nice. Village weather. We can see the whole village from up here. Do you want to go sightseeing? Not really. <laughs> it's getting late, and the rain's not abating. Look, family pictures. They must be the um, what did you call them? Let's talk about the weather first. It's really coming down. How about a quick run in the rain? You can't be serious. You're already a wet blanket, teddy bear. It's not like you'll get any wetter. Well, we can talk. Betty might be with the Fretlands, wherever they are. Wouldn't Anna Fretland have written you? She might have. We left Hanover a month ago. Oh, it is a church. There's the Stave Church. Do you think that's where they've all gone? Maybe there's a very popular funeral. The flag was at half mast, but. No sign of life out there. Huh. And nothing else I can look at. Where do you think they've gone? The Fretlands. The Fretlands, the Hansons, the Jensens, all of them. I'm sure they'll be back soon. It's like a dead land. As though its soul has departed. 
books. The books are all in English. Isn't that a bit odd? Mrs. Frontland is Scottish, though she oh. grew up in Olmesund. Have you been secretly communicating with Johann's winsome wife, Edward Dearest? Certainly not. She was the one who wrote me, because Mr. Fretland's English isn't as... I was only joking. Lighten up, old sport. Don't be such a pill. Did somebody try to burn a book? Wait, wait, wait. Let's first look at the portraits. Our hosts, the Fretlands. He hasn't seen any photographs of the Fretlands yet, but it's clearly them. And with he, they mean me? His familiarity with their hosts comes only from the letters he's exchanged with Mrs. Fretland. The Fretlands. Right. Anna and John? Johan. This is honestly not what I'd pictured. They're very presentable. Not at all like turnip farmers. They're not turnip farmers. That must be Johan Fretland, master of the house. What makes you think he's the master of anything? It's 1923, Teddy, old boy. Women can vote. <laughs> um, Johan. Old Johan's a bit wooden, isn't he? Like someone put a They're stick up his, for a up his rear end. I say, loosen up, Johan. I'm sure you two stiffs will get along famously. <laughs> I'm guessing their daughter is the master of this house. She's cute as a button. I can't wait to meet her. She's guaranteed to be more fun than you. Johan went and found himself a delectable bride. Alice, please. What can I say? She's a minx. Anna Fretland is a respectable woman. Her letter was courteous and professional. Didn't you say she was a city girl? It must have been awfully hard to adjust to life in the sticks. I can relate. Hanover isn't the sticks. Says you. The wedding. Wait, is that? Are they? It, who's? They're all twins. All oh yes, them. they are. That's Johan and Anna Fretland. There are two of each, Edward. Two of each. Frederick and Margaret. Twins marrying twins. <laughs> My mind's reeling. This is just too adorable. May twenty sixth, eighteen ninety nine. We'll be celebrating their silver anniversary next year. So, yeah, here's Johan and Anna, and that is Frederick and Margaret Fretland. And they even married at the same day. At the church. That we see up there, I suppose. Interesting. Huh. That's odd indeed. Oh, there are so many things. Let's see. What is that? What are you looking at there? A book. Strange place for a book. Unless it was a terrible book that deserved a good burning. What's the title? The cover is charred. No book deserves a burning. Christmas 1922. To Ruth. From Simon. Why would someone um. burn this? Like I said, maybe it was a terrible book. Is Simon one of the Freddy Landers? I don't think so. They only have the one daughter. So, Ruth. Was she in the picture? Wait, read it. What kind of book Did is it? Did you hear something? No. Huh. Must be the wind under the door. Or the churning sea. Or the interminable <sighs> rain. Or flesh-eating ghouls waiting she to She never pounce. shuts up, does she? Alice, honestly. <laughs> You're the one who reads Poe to me. Don't blame me for having an active imagination. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that's a good thing. I'm guessing their daughter is the master of this Yeah, house. we don't know. She's cute as a button. Ooh. But it's most probably Ruth. I can't wait to meet her. She's guaranteed to be more fun than you. Dear Mrs. Fretland, I trust this letter finds you and your husband in good health. I wrote to inform them about when I'd be arriving. So where are they? Do they even have calendars? Maybe they don't know what day it is. Despite appearances, we haven't gone back in time. They have calendars. So that's us or our letter to them. Dear Mrs. Fretland, I trust this letter finds you and your husband in good health. Thank you for your gracious invitation to stay in your home this October. I hope it will present no inconvenience to your family. 
I'm pretty uh, for the Atlantic voyage. I'm presently preparing for the Atlantic voyage on the SS Bergen's Fjord and plan to depart Boston later this month. I've still had no word from my sister Elizabeth, though I hope she has made it to Gravik in the time since the last letter. If this is the case, and if at all possible, I would greatly appreciate receiving a cable with the news. If Elizabeth cannot compensate you for the cost, I will of course do so as soon as I arrive. In regards to the dates of my travels, I shall be arriving in Alesund via ferry from Bergen on October the 15th, I will. Oh, the thought of boarding that infernal ocean liner again. I quite enjoyed it. So much room for exploration and mischief. So many opportunities for seasickness and claustrophobia. Ah, uh, don't be a Debbie Downer. I'm sure your tummy will be better behaved on the return voyage. And you'll be craving enclosed spaces after a week in this wide-open wilderness. Hmm. I doubt that. Home feels very <laughs> far away. Are we feeling melancholy again? I've never been this far from Hanover. It's about time we got you out of that dreary old house, teddy bear. Home feels very far away. Are we feeling melancholy again? Oh, wait, what? I've never been this far from Hanover. It's about time we got you out of that dreary old house, teddy bear. I asked about Elizabeth. And they hadn't seen her? Anna, Mrs. Fretland, promised she'd write if she heard anything. There wouldn't be many female reporters from New York and Western Norway. Why would she come here in the first place? Betty always has her reasons. Hmm. Okay. So he didn't receive a letter. telling him about her arrival. So either she never arrived or they didn't want to tell him. And she did neither. Huh. Okay. There's more. What is that? It's quite dark. A photograph. Uh... Opening of Gruben? I think the opening of the mine in 1897. Fredland Brothers Mining Company. Yeah, AS. 1897. Yeah, it's there. Frederick and Johann Fredland. That's the two twins. Gründe. So the founders of Fredland Brothers Mining Company. Well, those boys look proud as peacocks. What does it say there? Ruby? Gruben. The mine. Maybe that's where everyone is. Digging for precious jewels in the Stygian abyss. From what I learned <laughs> of this place during the brief stay in Olesund, the iron mine shut down 20 years ago. 20 years ago? So the two twins had a mine together. Frederick and Johann Fretland, founders of the Fretland Brothers Mining Company. They're the spitting image of each other. Twin brothers. And business partners. And they married twin sisters. Adorable. Yeah. He's a boy. He looks related to the other two. Huh. We don't know. The mine was only in operation until 1902. They must have lost a fortune. An iron mine wouldn't pay itself off in five years. Can we go spelunking? Perhaps we'll find trolls in the abyss. And we can steal their ill-gotten gold. There was a cave-in. It'll be unsafe. Oh, boo. Oh, so they closed it because of an accident. September 3rd, in 1902. Yeah, that's, that's when the mine closed then. July, May. Johann Fretland exits Fretland Brothers Mining Company. So the brothers parted ways? Johann sold his share to focus on farming. Well, that must have put a damper on their relationship. Oh, okay, it was not the accident. Oh, well, we don't know. So he left in May, and he was married to... Anna was her name, right? Tragic accident befalls the oh. Fretland Brothers Mining Company. What happened? After he left. The mine left. collapsed, killing three workers, 
including Arna Fretland, Frederick and Johann's younger brother. That's awful. That's the How boy. How old was he? Uh, 19. He might be the boy in the photograph. Operations yeah. were suspended after the accident. So, yeah. These are all the brothers. Foreign investors out of Frederick Fretland's mining company. Dire financial consequences for Fretland, who must have had a difficult time after his brother Johann Fretland pulled out earlier this year. Well, Johann was smart to exit when he did. The timing is curious. Like he knew something was about to go awry. Maybe it was clear that they didn't have good working standards and that something will happen. I mean, mines back then in the 19th century, or the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th, were pretty dangerous. I mean, they still are. But uh, without proper safety, must have been horrible. That's one dark mirror. Who? <laughs> that's, that's a grim sight, old bean. <laughs> okay. I'm exhausted and soaked to the bone. Let's get you to bed. We'll wait for the Fretlands. It's only courteous. Yeah, you cannot just lay down, can you? I mean, we don't even know where the beds are, and which is our bed. <laughs> oh, is that the village? There was a river like that, wasn't there? Oh, goats. <laughs> okay, so we just snoop around here. Well, I don't mind it. It's interesting. Ooh. Ready. Have you gone screwy again, Teddy? That's not Betty. Her That's. Scarf. I'd know it anywhere. It doesn't look like anything to me. It she just bought it looks in like Bloomingdale's the Christmas before last. When she came home that year, she showed it off, dancing around the sitting room until I got dizzy watching her. I think you're misremembering. She couldn't make it home that year. Again. No. I'm. You're wrong. I'm sure she was there. Whatever. It's not like you pay any attention to me when Betty's around. I might just as well be a ghost. Wait, we have different memories? Of things that happened back home? That's odd, isn't it? And, I mean, who is she anyways? <laughs> Are we related? I don't know. Inspect. There was something... no. It's just that. Look, it is her scarf. Oh, yeah. It even smells like her perfume. Shalimar. But what if that's She's not... She's here. I'm finally going to find her. That's... that's great, Edward, really. I... I wouldn't want you to get your hopes up. I mean, where's everyone gone to? Something's not right, I'm telling you. Uh-oh. Teddy? Edward. What's wrong? I... Lightheaded, that's all. You're having another spell. You know what happens when you exert yourself. We have a spell? Wait, what? What's going on? Sit down. That's an <laughs> order from your commander. Yes. Fine. I mean, she is definitely wearing that scarf. What are you doing? So... Come sit down. Even if we remember You'll feel better something after differently rest. about Come her sit. being there at Christmas, she still had that scarf on this photograph. So Stop being so stubborn, Edward. Yeah, Come yeah, here. yeah. Shut up. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Sit down, teddy bear. Oh, okay, okay. I just need to catch my breath. 
Just for a moment. I want you to lie down. Lie down and close your eyes. It's been a strenuous day. What with the rowing and the dragging of the suitcase up the hill. Well, what if the fret... I'll keep an eye out. I promise. If they come home, I'll wake you. Now, lie down, close your eyes, breathe deeply. I'm just... That's creepy. <laughs> but I'll end the episode here. Thank you so, so much for watching it. Have a wonderful and adventurous day and goodbye. Om natten